educator.com. Today we're going to be discussing the last type of conic section, which is hyperbolas. So far we've covered parabolas, circles, and ellipses. As you can see, hyperbolas are a bit different in shape than the other conic sections we've worked with. And one thing that makes them unique is that there are two sections referred to as branches. So there's two branches in this hyperbola. The formal definition is that a hyperbola is a set of points in the plane such that the absolute value of the differences of the distances from two fixed points is constant. What does that mean? First, let's look at the foci. So these two fixed points are the foci. And here is a foci, F1, and here's the other, F2. If I take a point on the hyperbola and I measure the distance to F1 and then the distance to F2, that's going to give me D1 and D2. Recall that with ellipses, we said that the distance from a point on the ellipse, if you measured the distance from one to one focus and then the other focus and added those, that sum would be a constant. Here we're talking about the difference. So the absolute value of this distance, D1, minus, so the difference, D2, equals a constant. So that is the formal definition of a hyperbola. Again, I could take some other point. I could take a point up here on this other branch, and I could find a distance, say, D3, and then the distance to F1 could be something, say, D4. Again, the absolute value of those differences would be equal to that same constant. All right, properties of hyperbolas. So hyperbola, like an ellipse, has two axes of symmetry, but these have different names. Here you have a transverse axis and a conjugate axis and they intersect at the center. We're looking here at a hyperbola with the center at 0, 0. One thing to note is that you can also have a parabola, uh, excuse me, a hyperbola that is oriented as such, but right now we're looking at this one with a more horizontal orientation. But just to note, this does exist and we will be covering it. All right, first discussing the transverse axis. The transverse axis is going to go right through here. It's going to pass through the center. And this is the vertex. And this is the vertex of the other branch. And this is the transverse axis. The distance from one vertex to the center along this transverse axis is going to be A. So Again, a lot of this is going to be similar from when we worked with ellipses, but there are some important differences as well. So the length of the transverse axis equals 2A. So from here to here would be 2A. The foci. If you look at a foci, say F1, F2, let's look at F2. It would be the same over on F1. If I looked at the distance from the foci, from one focus to the center, that's going to be C. The distance between the foci is therefore 2C. If I measured from here to here, that length is going to be 2C. There's a second axis called the conjugate axis, and the two axes intersect here at the center. The length of, of half, if you take the half the length of this conjugate axis, it's going to be equal to B. So the transverse axis lies along here. The conjugate axis, in this case, is actually along the y-axis, and the transverse axis is along the x-axis. The length of the conjugate axis is 2b. As with the ellipse, 
there is an equation that relates a, b, and c, but it's a slightly different equation. Here, a, b, and c are related by c squared equals a squared plus b squared. This relationship will help us to look at the equation for hyperbola and graph the hyperbola, or look at the graph and then go back and write the equation. So again, two axes, transverse, which goes from vertex to vertex, conjugate, which intersects the transverse axis at the center of the hyperbola and has a length of 2b. Transverse axis has a length of 2a. The distance from foci to fo focus to focus between the two foci is 2c. The standard form of the hyperbola is also going to look somewhat familiar because it's similar to an ellipse but with a very important difference. Here we're talking about a difference instead of a sum. So if you have a hyperbola with the center at 0, 0 and a horizontal transverse axis, the equation is a squared, x squared divided by a squared minus y squared divided by b squared. And here we again have the center is at the origin, 0, 0 although the center certainly doesn't have to be at the origin. And right now, we're going to start out working with hyperbolas with the center at the origin, just to keep things simple. And again, if by being given standard form, an equation standard form, you can look at it and get a lot of information about what the hyperbola looks like. Therefore, the vertex is going to be at a, 0. The other vertex will be at negative a, 0. You're going to have a point up here that is going to be b, 0. And this length, b, gives the length of half of the conjugate axis. And then you're going to have another point, actually that is 0b, because it's along the y axis, and another point, 0, negative b. So this distance is b from this point to the center. This distance is a. And then here I have f1 and f2, and the distance from one of those to the center is c. As I mentioned, you can have a hyperbola that is oriented vertically. So if the transverse axis is vertical and the center is at 0, 0, the standard form is such that the y squared is associated with the a squared term. And here, it's positive. So you're taking y squared divided by a squared minus x squared divided by b squared equals 1. In this case, what you're going to have is vertex right here at 0a, the other vertex here at 0, negative a. And then you're going to have the conjugate. So here's the transverse axis. The conjugate axis, the length of that of half of it is going to be b. The length of the entire thing is 2b. So this is going to be some point b0. And b squared is given here. So you could easily find b by taking the square root. And then over here, negative b0. So again, two different standard forms, depending on if, you, if you're working with a hyperbola that has a horizontal transverse axis or one that has a vertical transverse axis. Something new that we didn't talk about with ellipses is asymptotes. Recall that an asymptote is a line that a curve on a graph approaches, but it never actually reaches. And asymptotes are very useful when you're trying to graph a hyperbola. The equations are given here. Let's go ahead and draw these first. Now, recall that this vertex is at a point a0. This vertex is at negative a0. If I measure the length, so this is the transverse axis, and it's horizontal. And let's say that it turns out that b is right up here, 0b. And b is going to be the length from this point to the center. 2b will be the length of the conjugate axis. So then I'm going to have another point down here, 0, negative b. What I can do is form a box and a rectangle. And the rectangle is going to have vertices. I'm going to go straight up here and across here. Therefore. This is going to be get given by negative a, b. That's going to be one vertex. I can go over here and do the same thing. I'm going to go straight up from this vertex and straight across from this point, And that's going to give me the point a, b. 
Do the same thing here. I go down directly, draw a line across here. This point is going to be negative A, negative B. One final vertex right here, and this is given by A, negative B. Okay, now you draw a box using these A and B points, and then you take that rectangle and draw the diagonals. If you continue those diagonals out, you will have the two asymptotes for the hyperbola. Okay, so each of these lines is an asymptote. And notice that the hyperbola is going to approach this, but it's not actually, it's going to approach it, but it's not going to actually reach it. So it's going to continue on and approach, but not reach it. So it's going to approach like that. All right, now, this is one way to just graph out the asymptotes. You can also find the equation. And for right here, we're working with hyperbola with a horizontal transverse axis. So we're going to look at this equation. If I was working with a vertical one, I would look at this equation. Now what does this mean? Well, y equals plus or minus b divided by ax. What this actually is, is it, this b divided by a gives the slope of the asymptote. Recall y equals mx plus b. Since the center is at 0, 0, the y-intercept is 0. So here b equals 0, so I'm going to have y equals mx. The slope m is b divided by a. b divided by a for this line increasing to the right, and the slope here, so m equals b over a, the slope here is m equals negative b divided by a, where the line is decreasing as we go towards the right. So again, two ways to figure out these asymptotes. You can just sketch it out by drawing this rectangle with vertices at negative a, b, a, b, negative a, negative b, that's actually a, b, positive a, b, or negative a, negative b. Draw that rectangle, extend the diagonals. Or you can use the formula, which will give you the slope for these two asymptotes. If you just started out knowing the a's and b's and drew these, then you could easily sketch the hyperbola because you know that it's going to approach these asymptotes. Okay, so we've talked a lot about graphing, and just to bring it all together, you're going to begin by writing the equation in standard form, and then for hyperbolas, you're going to graph the two asymptotes as I just showed. So let's start out with an example, and let's make this x squared divided by 9 minus y squared divided by 4 equals 1. Since I have this in the form x squared divided by a squared, so this x squared term is positive here, divided by y, y squared divided by b squared equals 1. What I've got is um, a horizontal transverse axis. So this tells me that there is a horizontal transverse axis. So that's how this is just roughly sketched out already showing the transverse axis along here. Since it's in this form, I know that a squared equals 9, therefore a equals 3. This has a center at 0, 0. So the center's right here at 0, 0. And this point here is going to be a which is 3, 0. Right here, I'm going to have negative a, or negative 3, 0. So my goal is to make that rectangle, extend out the diagonals, and then I would be able to graph this correctly. OK. b squared equals 4. Therefore, b equals 2. So right up here at put that right there, 
0, 2. And then, so that's going to be B. And then right down here at 0, negative 2. Now, all I have to do is extend a line up here and here. And these are going to meet at 2, 3. Extend a line out here. I'm going to have a vertex right here at negative 3, 2. I'm going to have another vertex here at negative 3, negative 2. And then finally, one over here at 3, negative 2. Now, this was already sketched on here for me, but assuming it was not there, I would have started out by drawing this box and then drawing these lines extending out the asymptotes. And what's going to happen is this hyperbola is actually going to approach, but it's never, so it's, it's going to approach, but it's never going to intersect with the asymptote. So again, uh, write the equation in standard form, which might require completing the square. I gave it to you in standard form already. Use that to figure out this rectangle, and you're going to need to know A and B to figure out this rectangle. Draw the asymptotes and draw then the hyperbola approaching but not reaching those asymptotes. So far, we've been talking about hyperbolas with a center at the origin, so with center at 0, 0. However, that's not going to always be the case. If the center is at another point, hk, that is not 0, 0, then standard form looks like this. Very similar to what we saw with origin at the center, except instead of just x squared divided by a squared, we now have an h and a k. For a horizontal transverse axis, you're going to have x minus h quantity squared divided by a squared minus y minus k quantity squared divided by b squared. For a vertical transverse axis, these, the, this term is going to be first, it will be positive, and then you're going to take subtract x minus h quantity squared divided by b squared, but the k stays associated with the y term. For example, given this equation, y minus 3 squared minus x minus 2 quantity squared, and that we're going to divide that by 16 and divide this by 9 and set it all equal to 1. What this is telling me is that the center is at 2, 3, because this is h, that a squared equals 16, so a equals 4, and that b squared equals 9, so b equals 3. From that, I could graph out this hyperbola. And this has a vertical transverse axis. Something else just to be careful of. If one of these quantities, let's say I had something like this, y plus 5 divided by 10, this is quantity squared, plus x plus 4 quantity squared divided by 12 equals 1. The center is actually at, that actually should be a negative right here. This is a difference. So the center would be at negative 4, negative 5. And the reason for that is that this is the same as y minus negative 5 squared. And then x minus negative 4 squared. Negative and the negative is a positive. So you need to be careful, even though it is acceptable to write it like this, it is good practice if you're trying to figure out what the center is to maybe write it out like this so that you have a negative here so that whatever's in here is already k or already h. You don't have to say, oh, I need to make that a negative. I need to change the sign. So that's just something to be careful of. Here, I already had negative signs in here. They're completely in standard form. I had h and k. Here, h and k is negative 4, negative 5. All right, to get some practice, we're going to first find the equation of a hyperbola that I'm going to give you some information on. I will give you that the, one of the vertexes, the vertices, is at 0, 2. The other vertice is at 0, negative 2. The other piece of information is that you have a focus at 0, 4 and a focus called F2 at 0, negative 4. So looking at this, I can see that this transverse axis, and then the center is here, looks right there, okay. 
So I have a horizontal transverse axis. I can also see that the midpoint right here, the center, is at the origin. So the center equals 0, 0. So this is, this is actually vertical correction, vertical transverse axis, going up and down, vertical transverse axis. So since this is a vertical transverse axis with the center at 0, 0, I'm working with this standard form y squared divided by a squared minus x squared divided by b squared equals 1. So the a squared term is with the y squared term since this is a vertical transverse axis. All right, in order to find the equation, I need to find a squared. This distance from 0 to the vertex is 2 because this is at 0, 2. Therefore, a equals 2. Since a equals 2, a squared equals 2 squared or 4. So I have a squared. I need to find b squared. I'm not given that. But what I am given is an additional piece of information, and that is that there's a focus here and a focus here. This allows me to find c. The distance from the center to either focus, let's look at this one, from the center 0 down to negative 4, the absolute value of that is 4. Therefore, c equals 4. The distance is 4. c squared, therefore, equals 4 squared, or 16. Recall the relationship. c squared equals a squared plus b squared for a hyperbola. So I have c squared, which is 16, equals a squared, which is 4, plus b squared. 16 minus 4 is 12. 12 equals b squared. Therefore, b equals the square root of 12, which is about 3.5. If you wanted to draw b, then you could, because that's right here at 3.5, 0. But what we're just asked to do is write the equation. And we have enough information to do that because I have that y squared divided by a squared. I determine that a squared is 4 minus x squared divided by b squared, I determine that that is 12 equals 1. So this is the equation for this hyperbola with a vertical transverse axis and a center at 0, 0 in standard form. Okay. Next example, find the equation of the hyperbola satisfying vertices at negative 5, 0 and 5, 0 and a conjugate axis that has a length of 12. So just sketching this out to get a general idea of what we're looking at, just a rough sketch. Vertices at negative 5, 0. So negative 5, 0, and 5, 0. That means that the center is going to be right here at 0, 0. So Center is at the origin. Since the vertices are here, here, and here, then I have a horizontal transverse axis. So this is going to go through like this and then like this. So my second piece of information is that I have a horizontal transverse axis. Since I have a horizontal transverse axis, then I'm going to have an equation in the form x squared divided by a squared minus y squared divided by b squared equals 1. Centers at the origin, horizontal transverse axis. This is the standard form that I'm working with. I need to find a. Well, I know that the center is here and that a is this length. So from this point to the center, or from this, from this point to the center, from the vertex to the center, is 5. a equals 5. Since a equals 5, a squared equals 5 squared, it equals 25. The other information I have is that the conjugate axis has a length of 12. So the length of the conjugate axis 
recall is 2b. Here they're telling me that that length is 12. Therefore, 12 divided by 2 gives me b. b equals 6. So that would be up here and here. 0, 6, and then 0, negative 6. This would be the, the conjugate axis. So this is b equals 6. Since b equals 6, I want b squared. That equals 6 squared, which equals 36. Now I can write this equation. I have x squared divided, so this is my final thing, x squared divided by a squared, which is 25, minus y squared divided by b squared, and I determined that that's 36, equals 1. So this is a hyperbola with a center at the origin, and a squared is 25, b squared is 36, and it has a horizontal transverse axis. For us to graph this equation, and it is not in standard form. But when I look at it, I see that I have a y squared term and an x squared term, and they have opposite signs. So I'm working with the difference between a y squared term and an x squared term, which tells me that this is the equation for a hyperbola. If they were a sum, this would have been an ellipse since they have different coefficients. But it's a difference, so it's a graph of a hyperbola. What I need to do is complete the square to get this in standard form. Okay, so first grouping y terms and x terms. y squared plus 12y minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 36 equals 0. What I'm going to do is move this 36 to the other side. Get that out of the way for a moment by adding 36 to both sides. The next thing I need to do with completing this square is factor out the leading coefficient since it is something other than 1. So from the y terms, I'll factor out a 2. That's going to leave me with y squared plus 6y. You have to be careful here because you're factoring out a negative 6. So I need to make sure that I worry about the signs. And that's going to leave behind an x squared here. Here, it's going to leave behind actually negative 2x. So checking that, negative 6 times x squared is negative 6x squared. Got that back. Negative 6 times negative 2x is plus 12x equals 36. Now, to complete the square, I've got to add b squared divided by 4 in here, which equals b is 6, 6 squared divided by 4, 36 divided by 4, that's 9. need to be careful to keep this equation balanced. Now, this is really 9 times 2 that I'm adding. 9 times 2 equals 18. I need to add that to the right. Working with the x terms, b squared divided by 4 equals 2 squared divided by 4. It's 4 divided by 4. That's 1. So I'm going to add 1 here. Negative 6 times 1 needs to be added to the other side. So I'm going to actually subtract 6 from the right to keep it balanced. Now, rewriting this as y plus 3 quantity squared minus 6 times x minus 1 quantity squared equals 18 minus 6 is 12. 36 plus 12 gives me 48. The next step, because standard form would have a 1 on this side, I need to set all this equal to 1. I need to divide both sides of the equation by 48. This cancels, so it becomes y plus 3 squared. The 2 is gone. This becomes a 24. Minus 6 cancels out, and that leaves me with x minus 1 quantity squared. 6 goes into 48 eight times, and this is a 1. 
Okay, so a lot of work just to get this to the point where it's in standard form. But once it's in standard form, we can do the graph because now I know the center, I know a squared and b squared. Okay, so we've got this in standard form. So now we're going to go ahead and graph it. I'll rewrite the standard form that we came up with. y plus 3 quantity squared divided by 24 minus x minus 1 quantity squared divided by 8 equals 1. Looking at this, since this is positive, I see that I have a vertical transverse axis. The other thing to note is this plus here. Recall that if you have y plus 3 squared, this is the same as y minus negative 3 squared. And when we look at standard form, we actually have a negative here. So you need to be careful to realize that the center is at 1, negative 3, not at 1, 3. So let's make this 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. OK, the center then is going to be at 1, negative 3. Next piece of information, a squared equals 24. Therefore, a equals the square root of 24, which is approximately 4.9. b squared equals 8, therefore b equals the square root of 8, therefore, if you figure that out in your calculator, that's approximately 2.8. Since I have the center and I have a and b, I can draw the rectangle that will allow me to extend diagonals out to form the asymptotes. So the goal is write this in standard form, find a and b, find the center, make the rectangle, make the asymptotes, and then you can finally draw the, the both branches of the hyperbola. All right, so if the center is here at 1, 3, then I'm going to have two vertices. And what's going to happen, since this is a, tr a vertical transverse axis, is one vertice vertex is going to be up here, the other is going to be down here. Center's at 1, 3. That means I'm going to have a vertex at 1, and then it's going to start at the center, and then it's going to be 4.9 directly above that center. So that means this is going to be at negative 3 plus 4.9. The y-coordinate will be at negative 3 plus 4.9, which equals 1, 1 1.9. Therefore, at 1, 1 1.9, that's right there. That is where there's going to be one vertex. And this is A. This is the length of A. The second vertex is going to be at negative 3, 1, negative 3, that's the center. And then I'm going to go down 4.9. That's the length, again, of A. So that's negative 3 minus 4.9, so, or plus negative 4.9. You can look at it that way. Equals 1 negative 7.9, so down here. OK. So vertices at 1, negative 7.9, and 1, 1.9. Now, I need to find where b is where that, that end point over here is, horizontally, so that I can make this rectangle. I know that b equals approximately 2.8. That means that I'm going to have a point over here at 1 plus 2.8, negative 3. Well, 1 plus 2.8 is 3.8. negative 3. So 3.8, negative 3, right there. I can reflect across, and I'm going to have a point at 1 minus 2.8, negative 3, which is going to give me 1 minus 2.8 is negative 1.8, negative 3. So that's going to be, this is 2, right here, negative 2 right here. So that's going to be right about there. I now have these points. And recall that I can then extend out to make a box. There's going to be a vertex here. I'm going to extend across. There's going to be a vertex here. 
bring this directly down, vertex here, and then another vertex right here. Again, I got these points by knowing where the center is, knowing where the, the vertexes of the parabola, the hyperbola are, and then knowing the length of B. This is B, then this length is A. Once I have this rectangle, I can go ahead and draw the asymptotes by extending the diagonals out. Extending out. Another way to approach this, recall, would have been to use the formula for the slope that we discussed for the slope of the asymptotes. Either method works. Okay, so I know that I'm going to have hyperbola branch up here. The vertex is right here, and it's going to approach but never reach this asymptote. It's going to do the same thing with the other branch. Vertex here, it's going to approach but never reach the asymptote. Okay, so this was a difficult problem. We were given an equation in this form. We had to do a lot of work just to get it in standard form. And then once we did, we were able to find the center and form this rectangle, draw the asymptotes, and then at last graph the hyperbola. Example four, we don't need to do graphing on this one. We're just finding the equation of a hyperbola with the center here, zero, zero and a horizontal transverse axis. So I'm going to stop right there and think, OK, I've got a center at 0, 0, and a horizontal transverse axis. So the standard form is going to be x squared divided by a squared minus y squared divided by b squared equals 1, since the center is at 0, 0. I don't have to worry about h and k. The horizontal transverse axis has a length of 12. Well, the transverse axis length recall is equal to 2a. I'm given that that length is 12. If I take 12 divided by 2, that's going to give me a equals 6. The conjugate axis, recall that the conjugate axis, the length of that, is equal to 2b, which is 6. b equals 3. Now, I need to find a squared, which is 6 squared, or 36 to put in here. b squared is 3 squared, which is 9. Now, a squared divided by, excuse me, x squared divided by 36 minus y squared divided by b squared, which is 9, equals 1. So this is the equation for a hyperbola with the center at the origin, a horizontal transverse axis, and a conjugate axis with a length of 6. That concludes this lesson on hyperbolas. Thanks for visiting educator.com.